Object identifier. Fidget winners. Status, leasing and renting. Demand low. Value, 2,800 Great British Pounds, or 4,000 US dollars per pair per monthly lease. 1,000 Great British Pounds, or 1,400 US dollars per pair per daily rental. Availability, current inventory, 12 pairs. Additional units can be requisitioned if the demand exists. Description. Fidget winners are anomalous versions of the recent fad toy, fidget spinners. When a minimum of two fidget winners are spun counterclockwise, items will horizontally levitate up to 65 feet and project fanciful, semi-tangible holograms beneath them, who will then engage in combat. Spinning items clockwise displays the vital statistics of these fighting characters. Marshall, Carter and Dark LRP is not liable for any damage caused by fidget winner battles. The following initial report was authored by Victor Chan. Date, March 7th, 2018. Interest, low. Identifier, fidget winners. I was reviewing our most recent version of the SCP database for potential acquirable items when SCP-2947 called my attention. They're fidget spinners that generate ethereal, though still partially tangible, combatants, over 50 feet tall of this room, which will then engage in a spectacular battle. Naturally, the high amount of death and destruction such entities can potentially cause limits their desirability, but one of my clients, the Circus of the Disquieting, has expressed an interest in them. They intend to put on monster fights within a specially constructed ring, which should provide ample room to fight while minimising risk to the spectators. Since the Circus plans to use these items on a daily basis, I believe it would be best to lease them the fidget winners at a reasonable monthly rate in addition to a yet-to-be-finalised percentage of the revenue from these fights. However, it occurs to me that other clients may desire these for special occasions only, and so I would also recommend renting these items out on a per-dime basis as well. According to the SCP file, non-anomalous fidget spinners can be converted into fidget winners simply by coming into contact with the original SCP-2947. This means it should be possible for one of our operatives to covertly produce a supply of these items without seeing anything or the Foundation being alerted to any breach of security. I formally request that one of our operatives acquire as many duplicates of SCP-2947 as possible and that they be sent to the Hong Kong office. The following memo was sent by Amos Marshall to recipient Victor Chan. Low cost, low risk and the potential for obscene profit margins? Request wholeheartedly approved. Looking over the SCP file, I don't doubt these beasts will put on a bloody good show, but we shouldn't overlook their potential for collateral damage. Consult the A78XTs with the rental and leasing agreement on this one. Make sure it's crystal clear that we're 100% absolved of any liability in the event of a catastrophe. On a personal note, keep me updated on how the circus is using these. It's been a while since I've seen a good freak fight, and it just might be worth going out to see a pair of 50 foot tall ghost monsters duke it out. The following memo was sent by Jim Tully to recipient Victor Chan. Victor, I've been doing some product testing with the fidget winners, and it seems they gain XP after each victory, and lose it after a defeat. If they collect enough XP, they evolve like Pokemon into a bigger, stronger, more aggressive form. Considering how these things start out, that's saying something. We've only triggered one evolution so far, and I'll spare you the details, but if we didn't have that drone set up to knock the actual spinner down, it would have been a disaster. If these things were actual paratech, then either myself or Iris could reprogram them to be less problematic, but as far as we can tell, they're just cursed fidget spinners. The good news is that it seems to take about 12 straight victories to trigger an evolution. I'd recommend keeping track of each fidget winner's victories, which shouldn't be too hard since they come with a stat display. When one starts getting too much XP, it should be paired against an opponent it's likely to lose to. If one gets too close to the danger zone, it should be retired. Update the rental agreement to include all of this ASAP, and maybe even include a skilled drone operator, just in case. And make extra sure that damn circus knows about this. At the rate they're pitting these things against each other, an evolution is inevitable. The following incident report was authored by Victor Chan, date June 9th, 2018. After the Circus of the Disquieting had been hosting fidget winner fights for over two months without any incidents, Mr. Marshall insisted on seeing a fight in person. 
I, along with his usual retinue of guards and attendants, escorted Mr. Amos Marshall, as well as Mr. Skitter Marshall, to the circus of the disquieting show at Ostermouth Castle in Wales on June 8th of this year. Well, before this date, I personally saw to it that the circus received the updated leasing agreement and checked multiple times to make sure they had been adhering to it. Before the fight, I also checked the stats on each of the fidget winners to make sure they were all at acceptably low XP. Nonetheless, it just wasn't my night. The first few rounds proceeded as normal, with both the elder and younger Marshall enjoying the spectacle immensely. In the penultimate round, however, the fidget winner known as the Luminescent Lamia achieved an unprecedented combat multiplier and was hence awarded with enough XP to evolve. She transformed from a half-woman half-snake with glowing hair to a fire-breathing half-humanoid snake, at least 50% taller. More relevantly, she did not deactivate, as fidget winners typically do upon victory. Instead, the disembodied announcer that accompanies these things demanded a deathmatch against all the other fidget winners present. Before I could even suggest that we withdraw, the entire crowd, including Mr. Marshall if I may be so forward, cheered in agreement, and the deathmatch commenced. Almost immediately, the evolved Lamina knocked the other fidget winner fighters into the crowd, causing mass pandemonium. To the circus's credit, they did have a drone operator present who attempted to take out the Lemna Spinner, but the Lemna had become sufficiently tangible to swat the drone down. At that point, the tent was quickly evacuated, but the active winners were dispersed as well and began wreaking havoc throughout the circus. Mr. Marshall's security detail responded admirably, rapidly removing him from the scenario without wasting any time on also trying to rescue the accompanying sales representative. I survived, obviously. I'm not sure how much detail you'd like me to go into here, but numerous members of the circus were successful in knocking down the rogue fidget winners. I personally had no idea Lolly had such accuracy with throwing knives, with the exception of the laminar winner, which is currently detained in the funhouse with the fun lovers. I have requested that the circus update me on that situation as it develops. The following memo was sent by Amos Marshall to recipient Victor Chan. Sorry about that, kid. But these fidget winner fights were your idea. As for the show itself, I nearly died and lost every damn bet I made. But that was the best damn freak fight I've ever seen. 9 out of 10, would we'll see again. 